The Bible tells us that even Job talked about hell. God talked to Job about hell. It says in Job chapter 38, verse 22, have you visited the storehouses of the snow or even seen the storehouses of hail? God has storehouses of hail? Think about this. I have reserved them as weapons for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war. Sometimes we have a challenge thinking about God would send hail. Oh, no, wait till you read the book of Revelation when we go through it in two months. In the book of Revelation, God uses nature. God created nature. While, we're trying to, while, while people are trying to worship creation, the sun and the moon and the stars or the trees or the land, God is saying, I created that. Don't worship that. Worship the creator instead, not the created beings. And so now when we got this, this is, he, sends, he sends hail. He sends hail. Even in the Exodus, when Moses, God used the seven plagues. One of the seventh plague was hail. And hail just dropped on Egypt. So while rain is a blessing, oftentimes hail is judgment. And God was about to judge the people of the Amorites and those coalition of, of armies that had come together against God's chosen people. And so now here we have a, a, a situation now where God is sending hail. It's taking out the enemy. They don't have to fight as hard. But then in verse 12, then on the day that the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel, and he said, let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Aijalon. And so the sun stood still. Did you see that? The sun stopped. The sun stood still, and the moon stayed in its place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Wow. Today's message in the series called The Power of Prayer is called The Power of Out-of-the-Box Prayers. The Power of Out-of-the-Box Prayers. What do I mean by that? It's so interesting that there are times that you and I that we're going to pray, well, sometimes we don't pray. Uh, there are times in, your, in my life, in your life, that when we begin to look at the situation, what's going on around us, that we begin to doubt or we begin to either we act, operate faith or we act in doubt. But the power of out-of-the-box prayers, number one, it begins with a boldness to ask. It begins with a boldness to ask. It begins with boldness and bravery. But sometimes we don't pray this way because we don't think, who am I? I'm not worthy to pray a prayer like this, or I'm not experienced enough, or I don't understand yet how to do this. And I totally get it. If you were to ask me where I'd be bold in my prayers 20 years ago, not as bold as I am in 2024, 2020, in 2001, I didn't have the boldness to, to, to declare uh, or, or to pronounce anything because all I did was just, oh, Lord, if it's your will, oh, God. But, but I can tell you this, that God's got more in store for you in 2024. He has more in 2024. You just have to be bolder, and you got to be braver with your prayers. I told you from the very beginning, God wants prayer. He wants to communicate with us. But I also see precedents in Scripture or situations in Scripture where people are declaring things, that people are boldly proclaiming things. But sometimes here are several things that stop us from praying this way. Number one is doubt. Write this down. Number one is doubt. Uh, we doubt the Lord. We don't think the Lord can do it. We, 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 we doubt God's goodness or God's intentions, so we are filled with doubt. And I want you, this sermon, to make this teaching to take away some doubts from you. That maybe you can trust in God rather than doubt so much. That rather than doubting, that maybe God will infuse you with faith today in the name of Jesus. Believing for that healing or believing for a spouse one day. To believing to get remarried again or maybe believing to be married the first time. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Or believing for greater things than ever before. For a baby to get pregnant. I'm trusting God. But sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we doubt. Second thing that stops us from being bold and brave about our prayers is we can be double-minded. We can be double-minded, and, and it's related to doubt. Is the Bible says in James that a double-minded person is, un, is, is like an unstable person. They, they, they think they can, but they don't think they can. They trust God, but yet they don't trust God. And he says, I don't want you to be double-minded. I want you to be singularly focused. Amen. Second thing, the third thing that you could write down is one of the reasons why we don't pray these prayers is because we are disappointed. We were disappointed in the past, and I prayed, and it didn't work, and, and I asked for that, and it didn't happen. Well, I can tell you this, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 is the thing that I always rely on, that God is able, it's not on the screen, but God is able to do, ex um, God is able, wait, 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 I'm getting my scriptures mi mi mixed up. Um, uh, 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 
Mm, Romans 8, 28. Come on, come on. Where's my, where's my scholars? God will work all things. Thank you, thank you. See, you just trained well in the front row, the second, two, first two rows. <laughs> right? God works out all things. Everybody say all things. all things. For the good. Say good. Of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So when it doesn't happen the way that you thought it would happen, sometimes God's getting ready for something better. And, and it may not look like better in the beginning. It may look like, it may, may look like a bad situation. Can I give you an example? I'm not going to name the colleges. But we, have, we, were, we, were, we were headed to a college on the East Coast, my daughter's volleyball. And, uh, and by, by September, we had no more options on the table. Uh, there was no options on the table in September, and signing day's coming up, and so we are trusting God, and so, uh, so we have to trust God. And in the middle of that, we never thought that while we trust God, we got no backup option. Uh, we're trusting God. We work hard. We put it out there. We declare it. We believe it with all of our hearts, and God gives us a school that we never thought we could even imagine of her going or attending on the West Coast. See, God oftentimes in your life, because of the disappointment of the past or the disappointment that you didn't get the answer that you want, God can Romans 8, 28 your situation for better in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Number three, either number we doubt. Number two, we're double-minded. Number three, we're disappointed. How about here? Number four online, we're here. I'm just not there yet. You're not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite at that level, Pastor. I'm not there yet, Mike, that where I can feel like I can, I can trust God to be bold and brave right now in my life. That's okay. I was not there too. Uh, it, it incrementally, I got there. And then exponentially, I got there. You know, one of the biggest things that actually got me there was this building right here. This building right here. I can tell you that like, it's hard for us to imagine, you know, sometimes like just being in that little elementary school if you weren't there. And, and this, was, this was nothing. This was like an empty shell and the, the, somebody was renting it and paying a lot of money for that rent, but nothing was happening. And I'll drive by it for three years and yell at it. Four years go on, five years yelling at it. And, and I never got to see the building. I never got to see it until finally year number six of driving to my hot elementary school at the Waikele Elementary School. And I'm so thankful for that school. It taught us the value of hard work. It taught us what it means to build faith, to build resources. It taught me so much. I don't think I was ready for this building back then. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I could have handled this building. I don't think I could have handled this. I think, I think this was too big for me. And I tell you what, God let us grow into it. And so you get there incrementally. And sometimes you're thinking, I want that right now. God says, you're not ready yet, but one day you will be. And when you trust me, you won't be disappointed, and you will be there. I wasn't there before. I'm there now. And some of you, you're not there before, but you are there now. And I'm telling you right now, you got to be bold, and you got to be asked the boldness of Joshua to say, may the Lord stop the sun from moving. In fact, he didn't even ask the Lord. It says he said it. He prayed it out loud. Sun, stand still. And the sun stood still. We're not there yet, but you know what? You can get there. Here's number four, number five. Number five, we have a, 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 a limited mindset. Limited mindset. So we, what do I mean? We can't think there yet. We can't, we, we, we're just right here. It can either be from, from your environment, the way that you grew up, or you know what I'm talking about? Your environment can stop you from thinking and believing for more. That environment that you were in. Or maybe the environment that you're in now. So you're my, you, maybe you can't change your environment, but you can change the way you react to your environment. And so oftentimes it's the environment, and oftentimes it's experience. My experience, my experience has stopped me from believing for more. I'm telling you right now, I did not really think this way when we started the church. This, this is 22 years in the making. I think differently now. My mind is bigger. I, I, I can imagine more. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that God is able to do exceedingly, exceed, abundantly, more than we could ever ask, think, or even imagine. That, that I remember, oh, I'm going through the whole history lesson, and some of you, bear with me, you've been with us for 10 years or more. We're in that elementary school. Daniel Lehman, skinny, you know, YWAM worship leader, comes up, he comes up, and I love him. He's one of my best friends to this day. Anyway, anyway, he's like, Pastor, pa Pastor you do, do you receive a prophetic words in your church? This isn't the elementary school. It only seats 200 people. I'm in there. I'm like, yeah, I guess. Right now, you put me on the spot. I have to receive it from you. <laughs> and he goes, the Lord says your dreams are too small. I was like, wait, first of all, how, you, how dare you tell me that in front of all of my people? <laughs> wow. And number two, is it true? 
is it possibly true that I have not been dreaming big enough? And that I've been, and I wasn't because, I, because nobody was getting back to me on this building, because nobody was returning my phone calls. And because of that, I started looking at little warehouses in YPO. I was trying to prepare for something, anything, but they were not to the magnitude of this. And when he told me that your dreams are too small, it blew my mind. Bold and brave. Everybody say bold. bold. You got to be bold in your faith in 2024.